some of the most dramatic things that have happened over women's suffrage um, ha have happened in places which have been very little studied. So, for example, 40% of the female population of the world got the vote with, within the period of one year um, in the mid-20th century. So those are people in China and India and Indonesia. And if you start looking at the whole issue from that big enfranchisement and from the point of view of, of, of the East, rather than looking at it from the point of view um, of uh, uh, Britain and, and, and the United States, you get a very, very different picture. Some of the individual stories that I've been examining are, are just fabulous, so, so fascinating, so vibrant, such, such wonderful people did such great things. So you've got people like uh, Cheng Su Mei, who was a teenage revolutionary uh, in, in China and was uh, smuggling dynamite to help with the, the Republican Revolution. This is in the very early years of the 20th century when there was a very good chance that China would become uh, a, 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 democ a, a democracy. Uh, are people like um, Funmileo Ransom Kuti, um, who was a Nigerian woman who had to battle not only uh, the imperial masters, who were the British, but also the tribal elders who were in cahoots with the British and who also, she felt, oppressed women and, and denied democracy. So that, th those sorts of stories are, are, are some of them that I'm able to tell in this book. It's also the case um, that very often the people who led in the women's franchise movement um, were not actually the earnest suffragists with their university degrees. They were often people who were like um, soap opera actresses uh, like Ava Perron or, or were, 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 were models. And, and that is another remarkable thing that's been rather obscured by uh, some, some very staid histories which have been written about women's suffrage. Um, one of the people that uh, I've enjoyed writing about the most has been uh, Victoria Woodhull. Victoria Woodhull was the first woman to stand for the presidency of the United States in uh, 1872. Now, she was an, an old-style feminist. She was all into free love and communal living and spiritualism. Spiritualism was actually rather important in the women's suffrage movement and the ideas about women's suffrage. Um, and she started off uh, giving spiritualist demonstrations uh, from the back of a wagon at county fairs. And then um, she, she uh, discovered uh, an, an amazing ability at buying and selling, and she became a broker. She set up the first female brokerage firm in the United States. Um, and later, because though she had a very good press, she couldn't always rely on having a good press, what she did was to set up her own newspaper. And then she said, now I'm going to run for president. What is there to stop me? That's the sort of person she was. was. Victoria Woodhull was not trusted by the contemporary feminist organisations, by the suffragist organisations, people like um, Susan B. Anthony. And uh, Woodhull questioned the hypocrisy which he felt was at the heart of the uh, women's suffrage movement, and, and particularly uh, the Women's Suffrage Association w was, was um, run by a man, um, Reverend Beecher Ward, and uh, he was having affairs with members of his congregation, with other suffragists, with people from rival, rival, rival suffragist organisations and so on. And uh, Victoria Woodhull thought this was outrageous. He either ought to do it openly and honestly as a matter of free love, or not do it at all as a matter of, 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 of good um, Christian uh, 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 conservatism. Um, and so she announced this. In her, in her newspaper, and she was, of course, denounced uh, by the suffrage organisations, um, and she was also uh, taken to court because it was said that what she had said was obscene. And so on the day of the presidential election in 1872, the only female candidate was actually in jail. Uh, and, and what she did after that was to go on to, to other triumphs. Um, she, she left the United States 
and uh, she came to Britain, she set up um, um, a newspaper called The Humanitarian, and she married very well and lived to a ripe old age. That's the story of Victoria Woodhull, uh, but despite her um, very significant uh, contribution to um, women's suffrage and women's suffrage ideas in the 19th century, she was completely written out of the history by the women's suffrage organisations um, who like to revere uh, those of their own. And uh, one of the things I'm doing in this book, I hope, is redressing the balance uh, and giving some attention to some of those fascinating characters uh, who haven't previously appeared in histories.